Welcome to Musical Matinee here on TCM. I'm Dave Carger. This week's feature is a musical that is a true cult classic, and it was deliberately designed to become one. From 1979, it's Rock and Roll High School. Set at a struggling California high school, the story follows the ongoing battle between the rock and roll loving students and the puritanical principal. Leading the teenagers is a cheerleader played by PJ Souls, who's a diehard fan of the Ramones. She'll do anything for the chance to meet the band and no tyrannical principal is going to stop her. Rock and Roll High School was produced by New World Pictures, which was founded by our good friend here at TCM, Roger Corman, the king of low budget cult classics. New World Pictures chose to premiere this musical as a midnight movie, hoping it would immediately become a cult favorite along the lines of 1975's Rocky Horror Picture Show. And to a lesser extent, it did. Thanks to this film, the Ramones, who were not well-known outside of the New York punk rock scene, were suddenly exposed to a legion of new fans. As you'll see more than anything else, this musical is a showcase for the band. The soundtrack includes some of their biggest hits like Blitzkrieg Bop, Sheena is a Punk Rocker, and Teenage Lobotomy. And you can sing along with the songs because during the climactic concert sequence, the lyrics are on display as subtitles. The film also features musical selections from other 70s rockers like Alice Cooper, Devo, and Brownsville Station. From 1979, also with Mary Waranoff and Ron Howard's brother, Clint Howard, here is Rock and Roll High School. Rock and Roll High School was originally supposed to be a showcase for musical acts like Cheap Trick and Todd Rundgren, but director Alan Arkish insisted on getting the Ramones. In an interview with the New York Times, Arkish later recalled the experience of working with the Ramones. He said there were a lot of discussions about how the band was going to be presented. He said, I was particularly concerned with whether they were going to be comfortable coming off as dumb as their songs imply they are, but they said that was fine. Arkish also described the experience of shooting the concert sequence at the Roxy in Los Angeles. The sequence took 20 hours to shoot, he said, but the Ramones, quote, never complained, even though they had to play the same six songs over and over again. The crew didn't know who the Ramones were when we started, but at the end, everyone was singing Pinhead. Up next, we're headed to another high school, this time in New York, where Glenn Ford struggles to connect with his students, including a young Sidney Poitier. Next on TCM, Blackboard Jungle, then Every Which Way But Loose, and later, The Late Show. Our next guest is TCM Today.